Today we're with the voice of Los Angeles, Garth Trinidad. What do you think is the future of how we talk about and document and approach music for you? When you take away, you know, the sort of um, marketing promotional vehicle that it's become in, you know, putting genres in boxes in order to um, sell something. When you take all that away uh, and you look at the broader you know, um, spectrum, the bigger picture for, you know, independent music and different genres. There's so much more of like a, a coming together and, you know, a, a, a cross-pollinated pool of influence. You know, people are just pulling and grabbing and using and, you know, being inspired by all these different things because of, you know, the kind of access that everybody has now in a way they didn't have before. I think it's a really interesting time for music um, without, you know, what the handful of major labels are trying to accomplish along with um, the big brands and what they do with music. I don't really look at a lot of that stuff as music. It's a, it's a, it's a tool to promote a product. It's, it's, um, it's like a soundtrack to lifestyle. One thing I've been doing lately when I'm interviewing musicians is asking them to describe their approach to music, not using genre, using texture, color, temperature, animals, food, smells, anything That's but genre. Yeah. So I want to ask you, when you paint, when you're doing music, can you describe not using genre, your approach, your style? Certainly. Fantastic. You know, like the, the idea of fantasy, creating um, an alternate space or reality or picture with, you know, whatever the platform is, you know. Um, warmth. Tension. And uh, bliss, I think. Handful of words. Does that work? Absolutely. <laughs> it kind of builds this environment around you when you, when someone approaches music that way. You know, you can, you can. I can almost smell and taste what you're describing, Phil. You know, and I think an extension of that is your literal, tangible environment. So I wanted to ask you, what is Los Angeles to you? How does it shape to you? What does it mean to you? And just why? Why LA? But why LA? LA has certainly shaped me in everything that it's gone through, its legacy, musically, visually, environmentally. West Coast hip hop culture, um, and then how it was influenced um, by LA street life. You know, Thrasher Magazine, you know, the whole Dogtown thing. Um, and then early hip hop was just like how I expelled my experience of Los Angeles. But you, um, you also grew up in skateboarding culture, right? So, I mean, how does that come into play for you and how did that shape you? And what did you see as far as that? Because that was super counterculture. That wasn't maybe what it is now, right? It wasn't cool at the time. Well, it was, it was, it was, um, maybe not in fashion mm -hmm. it was uh but because it wasn't in fashion that's that's why i'm so cool <laughs> but i don't know you know for <laughs> for me and um you know my friends at the time we didn't we weren't thinking about like what was cool or not cool we just like being on the skateboard and so being um a kid you know and you you're inclined to be rebellious naturally because that's kind of like who you are at the time and what you're going through um, in this society that we live in. Um, it helped me express myself a lot without being um, an asshole as a kid. You know, mm -hmm. like I think I, I, my parents would agree that I was a pretty decent kid. I mean, I, I might, might have that wrong, but I think I was a pretty good kid because I had like a platform like skating 
And um, I was a visual artist, so it inspired me to create things on my own. I actually started um, doing my own graphics on my own skateboards, like with acrylic paint. And I would get like a raw board and sand it down. And like, it was just a way, it, it helped me be creative and expressive. And the music played a huge role in like how I developed um, eventually as a DJ. Do you feel like, you know, obviously you're an adult now, but do you feel like... I don't know, sometimes I, don't know. Sometimes I wonder about that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I always wonder if people maintain that rebel, that radical inside of them, even as they develop into adults and kind of exist within the social sphere and continue. Do you feel like when you're playing music, when you're making art, when you're just walking around, that you still have that rebellious kid inside of you? Yeah, he's a, he's a jerk. And um, he gives me the evil eye when, whenever, you know, like, I'll either hear, it could be anything. Um, and that, it's that voice that says, you know, that's lame. That's lame, that's whack. You know, like, it's not working for us. He kind of controls me, actually. I think that's probably why I ended up doing what I do and why I have passed up a great deal of opportunities um, in the industry because I just, that is that voice that, that won't let me sleep at night if I um, agree to do something that I know aesthetically won't work for the kid. It's like a spirit guide. It's like if, it's like that gut feeling like we are uncomfortable with this. Mm -hmm. This is not working. This is not you. It really, that's the voice. This is not you. Could you have squashed that voice? I don't know, I mean, from personal experience, I never tried, I never wanted to, you know? I, it's not something I ever felt the need, need to do. I like, I like having that voice, you know? Kinda, I think it keeps me grounded and yeah. keeps, me, um, it keeps me in touch with myself, you know? Yeah, I mean, what's interesting about you is that you sort of straddle a lot of worlds you have access to i don't know what to call it the mainstream the the bigger kinds of things but you you're also behind the scenes and you are this kind of behind the scenes trendsetter but also you're very known i mean what is that like to straddle Am so I? many <laughs> <laughs> you straddle so many worlds you have so much access but you can also step back and and you know become the source yeah I'm in the middle, right? Like, like there's, um, there's, there's, a, and that's where that, that voice comes in. It's like the, the, there's a voice there that will say, okay, here's a potential mainstream project. Mm -hmm. So let's lay it all out. Okay. If you start here, where could that potentially take you? And once you arrive, are you gonna be regretful? You know, maybe, maybe that's my overthinking, but I think that that has kept me um, very realistic about who I am, what I represent, and what I love. So, you know, we keep kind of going back to the source, and I wanna know what was your earliest memory of music? Oh my goodness. Uh, I think it was 1982 when Tom Tom Club, Tom Tom Club put out Genius of Love. So I'm eight years old. Eight yeah. years old. I'm eight oh, years okay. old at the time. I want to say we were like in Big Bear or something. We were in a parking lot of like a supermarket. And I remember like, we were either going to the store or leaving the store and I was outside of the car or venturing toward it or away from it. It was basically a parking lot. In this Trans Am, I think it was a Trans Am, could have been a Camaro, but I think it was a Trans Am. It came in the parking lot, the windows are down and the music is blasting at that song. Never heard no shit like that in my life. It, I stopped in my tracks and I was like, what the fuck is this? It just was like 
what? It took me to that place. That's one of those foundational moments for that voice, that, that kid voice. That basically that song became one of those measures. One of those things that things get measured against. You know, one of those songs that includes those descriptives that I gave you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those it that's a critical musical moment in my life. Definitely one of my earliest, you know most clear music memories is that song. When I first heard that song coming out, that, that Trans Am, I was like, my jaw dropped to the ground. I was like, never heard anything like that before. It was amazing. She was like a witch singing on the song. It's, it's a bewitching song and it bewitched me. It took me away. It was like, it was almost like haunting. But it was really good. It was so groovy. I was like, damn, that's incredible.